Hey, how's it going folks? ET here with another tutorial. In today's tutorial, it's a little conversation about editing video on the old iPad. So I thought I'd break down um, some of the choices you could have when you're an iPad owner and my personal recommendations. So first things first, I think best thing about an iPad is all of them come with iMovie for iPad. It's free, it's easy to use, it's beginner level to intermediate. And um, I think the only downside I see is there is a little bit of lack of functionality. There's no parity between the Mac version of iMovie and the actual iPad version. It's getting closer, but there's so many features missing in the iPad version. But again, it's free. So if you're just doing simple videos, maybe to intermediate level, then you're probably pretty safe with that route. Also know that any modern iPad can, can use iMovie. It doesn't matter what CPU, what chip you're using, you are good to go there. Alrighty, number two, DaVinci Resolve for iPad. The good thing about this is there's basically a free choice that has the majority of the editing functionality for free. And um, if you do want to go to that next level and get all the, the functionality that comes with it, there's a one-time $95 upgrade fee, which to me for basically pro-level editing on the iPad is kind of a steal. It's a little bit of a steep learning curve. It's similar to the desktop version um, with a little bit of things held back. But um, all in all, I think it's not that too difficult to learn if you mess with it. Um, it is basically a pro-level editing suite for the iPad. The one limitation that I see besides the, the little bit of a steep learning curve is that you will need an M1 or greater chip on your in your iPad. So that'll be the newest iPad Air and all the iPad Pros, which are M1s and M2s. So in my order, you know, iMovie first, second will be resolved for iPad. Third, I'm gonna put here, it just came out and it's one of the reasons why I'm doing this video is Final Cut Pro for iPad. This is awesome because going from iMovie to Final Cut Pro is usually a really good an easy changeover or upgrade for most folks. The one irritating thing, and this is just a personal pet peeve of my, my own, I do not like paying subscriptions for software. For me, the negative is it's $4.99 USD American dollars per month or about 50 bucks a year, 49. And it's that subscription, you gotta keep paying and paying. Yeah, I know it goes to the company and the programmer, so I keep updating hopefully, but it's just the principle of things with me. I just do not like paying subscription software. Um, like I said, easy conversion between iMovie and Final Cut. It's really fully featured pro level stuff there. Lots of really cool, which is why I kind of like it. And I might actually pony up for maybe a few months just to test it out. Lots of cool uses with the, the, the pencil and um, animations and functionality with masking and text and all that stuff. It looks really cool. Uh, this version needs M1 or greater similar to the DaVinci Resolve thing. So you're gonna be limited to the newest of new iPad Airs and all those iPad Pros that are M1, M2 chips. Last but not least, um, I have this software. I rarely use it just because it's a little bit too clunky for me. Uh, that's called LumaFusion. It is available on the iPhone and the iPad. It does not matter what CPU you have, as long as it's a relatively you know, recent version of an iPad several years back, no problem. It is a $29 plus in-app purchase kind of upgrade. So you can download it and actually, you know, start with it. But if you want the full functionality, I believe it's uh, 29 bucks. I actually just paid for it uh, just because I wanted to be able to edit uh, multiple video tracks. And it's basically to me a really good step up from iMovie for iPad. But again, um, a little bit of clunkiness in certain things. Most normal editing is not a big deal. And once you get used to it, it's really zero problems. But I never really got into the groove on certain things. I can use it, but it's not my preferred. It's powerful and basically, I would call it basically pro level for editing. And again, just about any iPad uh, that's been released over the last several years. And of course, with any video editing on any system in the world, the better CPU and GPU and chip and all that graphics you have, the better your experience will be editing. So out of these four pieces of software, I think this is kind of the order that I recommend them. To the left, iMovie, it's on there, it's free. No big deal, you can make really nice videos with it. Next step up, I would say use the free version of DaVinci Resolve until you bounce up against those limitations, which sometimes you won't. They have a lot of functionality for free in there. 
So no, no problem there. If your iPad CPU is good enough, Final Cut Pro, it's gonna, be, it's great, it's awesome. But if you don't mind that little fee, and again, five bucks a month, really not that bad. It's just more principle for me. And in fourth place, LumaFusion. Again, a little bit of clunkiness here and there in certain parts of the application, but it's still a great app. All four of these editing apps are are really good, so I don't think you're gonna be missing out using any of them. Again, based on your level, how deep you want to actually go into editing. Do you want quick and easy? That's iPad. And if you want more expert and pro level, you have the three apps here, the DaVinci, the Final Cut, and a little bit lesser would be the uh, LumaFusion. But still, all great. Anyways, I think that's it for today's video. I want to thank everybody for watching. And as usual, don't forget, hit that thumbs up, comment if you want, subscribe, all that jazz. We'll talk to you next time. Peace and aloha. Mm -hmm.